Last night on this program, we were talking about Geraldine Ferraro's racial remarks about Barack Obama. I'd mentioned that I'd known the congresswoman for a long time and that she used to have more class than that. Apparently, I was mistaken. Thanks to some excellent digging by Ben Smith at Politico.com, we find out that the woman who helped Walter Mondale lose 49 states in 1984 has been saying offensive things about blacks for longer than I'd realized. In a piece that originally appeared in the Washington Post back on April 15, 1988, written by uh, our friend Howie Kurtz, Ferraro said this, quote, if Jesse Jackson were not black, he wouldn't be in the race, unquote. Which sounds a lot like what she's saying about Obama now, that if he was a white man, he wouldn't be in this position. This kind of rhetoric ought to be beneath a former congresswoman and the first woman ever to run for vice president on a major ticket. Sometimes you can learn more about someone by watching what they don't do than by observing the actions that they actually take. For example... When Samantha Power, a top advisor to Barack Obama, called Hillary Clinton a monster, she was gone the next day. Yet Geraldine Ferraro makes racial remarks about Barack Obama and retains her seat on Hillary Clinton's campaign finance committee. She also refuses to apologize. This is the kind of ugliness that threatens to tear the Democratic Party apart. So here's the question. Should Hillary Clinton remove Geraldine Ferraro from her campaign finance committee for her remarks that Ferraro made about Barack Obama? You can go to CNN.com slash Cafferty File and post a comment on my Here blog. The Cafferty File, Jack. Question this hour is, should Hillary Clinton remove Geraldine Ferraro from her finance committee for the remarks that Ferraro made about Barack Obama? Ron writes from Pennsylvania, the whole Clinton campaign should be dumped for race baiting. Ms. Ferraro's comments were those of a country club racist, the type who goes to all of the charity events for the underprivileged, but believes that every black who ever got ahead did so through affirmative action. They stand around the bar at the club complaining about blacks who are getting into Ivy League schools while good white kids can't. Rocky in Texas, don't think so. She only said what everyone else already knows, but is too politically correct or afraid to admit. If you tell the truth, you are somehow a racist. And if you're a Democrat and aren't supporting Obama, you are all of a sudden a racist. This primary is completely about race and to a smaller extent about gender. Marion in Iowa writes, it's telling that while one of Obama's advisors referred to Hillary as a monster and was fired within a day, Hillary has taken no action against Ferraro for her belittling racial comments toward Obama. To merely say these comments were unfortunate doesn't cut it. It was a hurtful reflection on all blacks. And if Hillary was sincere in caring about black people other than for her own gain, she would feel this hurt immediately. Angelo in Simi Valley, California, Ferraro's comments are an outrage. Making statements like that only reveals reveals the latent racism that exists just beneath the surface in our society. If Hillary had any decency, she wouldn't only denounce and reject Ferraro's statements, but remove her from her campaign immediately. Jan writes, Hillary Clinton's already said she disagrees with the statement. What do you want, blood? The media are the ones who have made this a race and gender issue. Come on, Jack, fess up. I didn't hear this hue and cry from you when all the nasty things were said about Hillary. Ferraro has a right to her opinion. And one of the best we've gotten in a long time, Jack writes uh, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, you're old and tired and an angry man. You belong with those two old men who sit in the balcony of the Muppet Show and continually gripe about everything they view from their seats in the balcony. Shouldn't you be playing shuffleboard in Florida or something? I told my wife, if I ever get as old as Jack Cafferty and start mumbling nonsense, just put me away in a home. <laughs> Friend of yours. <laughs> Jack, thanks very much.